Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about genes and DNA. This is our molecular genetics lecture one where we talk about DNA and RNA. So starting with uh, this picture right here, um, it shows you this chromosome. Remember, chromosome is the condensed form of DNA, not just any DNA, it's condensed form of DNA. We can talk about that. It's also DNA wrapped around histone proteins, right? So you can see DNA right here and uh, wrapping around proteins. It's not really shown. Um, Anyway, so, and you also know that genes contain instructions for making proteins. So remember, our definition of a gene is a sequence of DNA that uh, makes up a, a protein or a trait, or that codes for a protein or a trait, right? So let's start with some notes. A DNA is a type of macromolecule. So if you think back to the first month of our semester, back in se September, we talked about the four types of macromolecules. So think to yourself, what are the four types of macromolecules? There's protein, there is a lipid, there is uh, nucleic acid, and, and there's carbohydrate, right? So DNA is a type of those macromolecules, um, and is called, not, it doesn't say. So DNA is a type of macromolecule, and it belongs to the category of nucleic acid. So nucleic acid is the big category, and under nucleic acid, we have the two that we mainly talk about in this class, DNA and RNA. So those are the subcategories. DNA and RNA belong to the macromolecule type nucleic acid. Okay? So um, what does a DNA do? It controls all the actions inside of the cell. It is the, the blueprint for a, a cell and how the body will work. It is the, the instruction for building an IKEA furniture. Anyway, it contains all the instructions for what your body's supposed to do. Uh, its primary function is to store genetic information, and we've talked about this before, it's kind of a review. And DNA stands for, this you should know, um, the full name of DNA and how you can spell it, is called deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, deoxyribo, so oxy is talking about oxygen, deoxy, deoxy part um, is talking about a part of the DNA is actually missing an oxygen, so deoxy. Ribo uh, is a type of sugar. There's ribose, um, that's sugar. And then nucleic acid is the macromolecule. Okay, so deoxyribonucleic acid. Repeat after me three times. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. So you should be saying this out loud if you're at home. Um, so now. Uh, what is the di difference between DNA and genes? We talk about DNA, we talk about genes, we've talked about the differences, but let's look at, look at it one more time. A gene is a sequence of DNA that codes for a protein or a trait. So DNA is a whole long strand of double helix. Okay, can you imagine this? It's right here. This is your DNA, but only a part of it will be gene. But on this DNA, we have many genes. Genes, 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 genes. But as you can see, a gene is a chunk of the entire DNA, and it codes for a particular protein or a trait. So this gene right here is going to code for something that's different from what's right, uh, right over here. Um, in humans, genes vary in size. So some genes maybe are this big. Some genes are this large. Okay, um, so that's what we're talking about. Uh, from a few hundred DNA bases, we'll talk about what a DNA base is. So basically. Basically, a DNA base is one is one building block of a DNA. So if you were to think about uh, a Lego, right? If you were to just put Lego on top of Lego on top of Lego, in the end, you're going to have a really long Lego chain. But each one of those little Lego block is the building block for the Lego, right? So for DNA, each one of those little building blocks are called DNA bases. So genes vary in sizes. Some of the uh, genes might be, let's say, 100 DNA bases. Some of those might be 300 DNA bases, right? So, so hopefully you get the idea on what it means that genes vary in size. They're not all the same size. They're not all made, out, made up of the same amount of um, building blocks or Lego blocks. Um, the Human Genome Project has estimated that humans have between 20,000 and 25,000 genes. Um, well, those are just all the genes that make up all the proteins and the traits, you know. All right. And uh, the, obviously, the, the amount of genes is different for different types of organisms. 
Um, so humans is between 20,000 and 25,000. Most genes are the same in all people. That's what makes you a, a person and not uh, a monkey, for example, or a panda because you have different genes, right? So because the genes are, uh, the genes that we have that are similar are what makes us us. And if you think about it, most genes are the same in all people, really. We're way more similar than we are different, and I hope you can remember that and appreciate the fact that we're all, we're all human beings and you should treat each other like human beings. Um, uh, only a small number of genes, less than 1% of the total amount of genes in a person, are different between different people. So you can also remember that there are differences between people, and you should remember that, you know, that the way that you think about life is not exactly the same as everybody else's, and that's okay. All right, uh, we've seen pictures like this before, just some review of a certain words. DNA double helix is just, just the DNA itself, and we'll look at the specific dress structures of it. So this here, there's your DNA. DNA wrapping around histo is called nucleosome. Don't worry about this word. Uh, if you remember it, good. If you don't remember it, that's fine. As long as you remember, DNA can wrap around histone. The purpose of having these histones is, first off, it, it gives DNA a, a little more structure so that we don't just have DNA floating all, the, all over the place, all tangled up. Um, the histone helps organizing the DNA. But it also helps with gene expression. Sometimes the DNA, oh, so for example, sometimes the DNA will wrap around the histone really tightly that uh, we can't make protein out of it, but sometimes it wouldn't wrap around the histone as tightly, then in that case, we are able to uh, make proteins from it. You can learn more about this in AP Bio. So, um, so as you can see, we, can ha we have the regular DNA histone structure, and we can wrap around. You know, the histones can also come together to make chromatin. So now it's a more, even more compact structure, and then these chromatin can form loops and form chromatin loops, and then form condensed chromatin loops. And eventually, you have these chromosomes that are highly condensed DNA with histones in it. And you only form these chromosome structures during cell division. So during mitosis, meiosis, during prophase one, that's when you can start seeing the chromosome structure of the X shape. Okay, so don't, don't forget this. Our final exam is going to come up before, before you know it. All right, um, so here's a person that's worth mentioning, uh, Rosalind Franklin. This lady, um, along with a bunch of other people, obviously, it's, it's never one person's work. This lady figured out a kind of a general shape of a DNA using x-ray. So she kind of had DNA samples and then she shoot x-ray through the DNA, obviously. None of us know how it actually works. But this image that she came up with is right here. And as you can see, um, you can kind of see the DNA double helix right there. There are two strands right here, and they're crossed like an X shape, like your typical X shape of the chromosomes. So this makes sense. And then there are these two people, Watson and Crick. These are the people who first um, built an actual model of the DNA with um, the sugar, phosphate, and base, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So more notes. Well, anyway, these are people that you should know about. Um, more notes. DNA is stored in the nucleus of the cell. So easy. DNA is a type of nucleic acid. Here, here it is. And it's made out of nucleotides. So nucleotides, if you can remember, those are called monomers. Monomers are the, the little tiny building blocks or the Lego blocks. And um, for DNA, we have nucleotides, DNA nucleotides. Um, so for, uh, for each nucleotide, there are three parts. We're going to look at a picture of this, so it makes a little more sense. Just write it down first. There are three parts. There's a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogen base. So for every single nucleotide, this one building block, there are also little parts of it that may, makes up this one building block, okay? One building block. In your, your head, you should see this. This is one building block. Um, you, we have one sugar, and this sugar specifically is called deoxyribose. It's like saying, well, I can give you candies, but the specific candy that I can give you is called Jolly Rancher. Okay, same idea. Sugar is a big category. There are many, many, many different types of sugars, and the specific type of sugar that's used to build DNA is called deoxyribose. Say the word, deoxyribose. Deoxyribose. This is important. 
because in RNA, the sugar is not called deoxyribose. So deoxyribose, and then we have a phosphate group and a nitrogen base. These are things that if I were to ask you, what are the three parts of a DNA nucleotide, you should be able to write out these three parts by yourself, okay? Next one, there are four different bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Uh, all you, I'm not going to test you on the, the, the words. I'm only going to test you on the, the capitalized letters. So ATCG, repeat that three times, ATCG, 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 okay? So those are the four DNA nucleotides, okay? So, so how does this work? We have nucleic acid. We have the entire DNA. We have the building block of a DNA. There are three parts of the DNA, sugar, phosphate, nitrogen base, and because there are four different types of bases, there are also four different types of nucleotides, okay? So it's like saying we have Coca-Cola, and there are four different types of Coca-Cola. There are way more than four. But let's say you have four different types of Coca-Cola, okay? So Coca-Cola is your nucleotide, and each type is the A, T, C, and G. So why does this matter? Uh, oh, there we go. So the base pairs are complementary. So if you can remember, DNA is double helix like this, right? So it's able to do this because on each side of the strand, each strand, we have pairs of nucleotides that can pair with each other and form bonds in between, okay, like this, all right? So how this works is that we have to have A paired up with T, C paired up with G. How I remember it is that first off, you have to remember there are four types of bases, A, T, C, and G. And C and G pair together. To me, they pair together because they look similar. And A and T are the leftover weirdo ones, and they pair together. So uh, we call this complementary base pairs. So you, this is a word you should remember. The base pairs is in a complementary matter. A always pairs with T. C always pairs with G. That's on your notes. DNA is a double-stranded molecule. Double-stranded molecule. And it looks like a ladder with two sides. So it's more like a twist of ladders. So we have these ladders, and you twist it, okay? Um, moving on. Uh, th this picture is important. They're all important, otherwise it wouldn't be on here. Um, so as you can see, we have a very short uh, DNA double helix, right? As you can see right here, A pair with T's, A, T, C, G, T, A, C, G. This makes sense. A always pairs with T. Whenever you see A, you know on the other side it's going to be T. Whenever you see C, it's going to be G, T, A, G, C. Okay? And then if you have this, uh, this, this ladder and you twist it, it's going to look like this. Um, right here shows, uh, when, when I talk about there are three parts of a nucleotide, first you need to know you need to know how a nucleotide looks like. This is how a nucleotide looks like in cartoon version. We have our five carbon sugar right here. So that's your sugar. This sugar is called deoxyribose. And then we have a phosphate attached to one side of the sugar. Okay, so this is one nucleotide. We're only looking at this, this is one circle right here. And then we have this base, uh, this is called C in this case. Um, so this one sugar, one phosphate, one base is called one nucleotide. If you move down one, this is one nucleotide. This is one nucleotide. This is one nucleotide. And between C and G, there are three hydrogen bonds, and A and T, there are two hydrogen bonds. This is something you don't actually need to remember until AP Bio, but if you can remember this, it makes you smarter. You just know more things, and that's good. Um, okay? So on the test, or on a quiz, you're going to be asked to identify where, where you can find one nucleotide. How is the one nucleotide going to look like? There's one sugar, one base, one phosphate. That's, that's all you need for one nucleotide. This is another nucleotide. In this picture, you have eight nucleotides in total. The last thing is that DNA is an anti-parallel. Okay? Anti, well, anti means it's opposite. Parallel means... This is parallel. Anti-parallel doesn't look like this. Anti-parallel looks like this. Okay, so so why does why does this matter? Everything has a direction. Um, then this matters because in order for DNA to replicate, the the replicating replicating material kind of needs to know which side to move. Um, 
anyway, so right, but right now you only need to know that DNA is anti-parallel and it has a five prime end and a three prime end. So if five to three, you always remember want to remember it for, as five to three. The specific reason right now is too complicated to explain it to you. Um, but, but, but take a look, five to three going in this direction, but the opposite strand goes five to three this way, okay? Same idea over here. If we have five to three going this way, five will be right here, three will be right here. If five is here on the other strand, five will be here. If three is here on this strand, on the opposite strand, three will be there. Anti-parallel, okay? If you don't understand this, please ask. Um, the double-stranded molecule is coiled in a helix matter, right? Double helix, twisted ladder. Um, because of this, we refer DNA as to DNA as a double helix, double because it got two strands, helix because it twists. Moving on, the strands are made out of alternative, alternating sugar and phosphate molecules. So if you look right here, you know, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. They're alternating. Okay, moving on. Oh, now label the diagram on your guiding notes. You want to label, you want to circle one nucleotide. Do that right now. And you want to label one sugar, one phosphate, one base. See if you can, um, you see if you know how to do that. Okay. So here's the answer key. Do it yourself first. And pause the video. Now here's the answer key. We have. Um, you don't know which one is A or T or C or G, and that's that's fine. I, in the question, I will tell you um, at least one of them. If I were to tell you this is A, you have to know that this is T, right? If I were to tell you this is C, C you have to know this is G. But inside of the double helix, well, where, where you have bases facing each other, how do you know their bases? Because they're facing each other. So these are the nitrogen bases in the middle. And then these five, uh, what, pentagon? Yeah. These pentagon shapes, those are your sugar. And in this case, what are they called? They're called deoxyribose, deoxyribose. And then we have the phosphate groups. That's it. Oh, and then if you were to circle up, oh. if you were to circle one nucleotide, you could do this. Can you see it? Can you imagine it? So one base, one sugar, one phosphate, circle around. There you have it, one nucleotide. All right. Uh, I'm not going to explain to you the, the three to five direction um, in too much detail, but basically we count carbons and we count zero, one, two, three, and the, this carbon faces this way, three, uh, and four, and five, this carbon faces this way, okay? But if you were to count on this side, so, so in this picture right here, the three on the left strand is facing the bottom and the five direction is to the top, the relay is where the carbon is facing. Um, and then on the opposite strand, if you do the same thing, zero, one, two, three. The three is facing up now, up, down. And then uh, on the other, but then three, four, five, and the five is facing down. Okay. Uh, again, we have one nucleotide sugar, phosphate, well, sugar, phosphate base. The bases are facing each other, A, T, C, and G. Complementary base pair. If I were to ask you to circle one complementary base pair, you can either circle this entire thing, or if I'm only asking about the bases themselves, these are the bases A and T or C or G, uh, C and G. You circle those, circle those, A and T, two double bonds, um, two double bonds, um, two hydrogen bonds, C and G, three hydrogen bonds. There's one nucleotide. That's it. Okay. All right, uh, what are the building blocks of DNA called? Review, nucleotides, write the complementary sequence. You have this one right here. All right, uh, you should be able to write it, write it. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, A, T, C, G, G, C, T, A, right? This makes sense. If the top strand goes three to five to the right, the bottom strand has to go three to five to, that is, the arrow is wrong, three to five, um, to the left, five to three. Anyway, if the arrow is pointing this way, the arrow is pointing the other way, three to five, five to three, as long as it's opposite, um, you got it, okay? Almost done. DNA is only one example of nucleic acid. What's the other example that we talk about? It's called RNA. 
RNA instead of deoxyribonucleic acid. See how easy, easy it is to remember the full name of RNA? It's only ribonucleic acid. You just get rid of the deoxy. So if you can imagine it, if deoxy is talking about missing an oxygen, ribonucleic acid isn't missing that oxygen anymore. There are many other differences um, in RNA as well. But here we are first starting with the name. RNA makes up proteins. So the sequence goes like this. It's kind of a, a, a streamline. You start with DNA. DNA is made into RNA. RNA is then made into protein. Okay, so it's a, RNA is directly made into proteins, and DNA is directly made into RNA. So you can't jump from DNA directly to proteins. It doesn't work. Um, so if you were to look at, on the left side, RNA, on the right side, DNA, there are some differences between the two. First off, the sugar... Right? Remember, DNA has a sugar, and it's called deoxyribose. In RNA, that sugar is called ribose. Okay, so that's one difference. The sugars are different. One is deoxyribose, one is ribose, and the ribose doesn't, uh, does have the oxygen. And then if you were to look at the bases, for DNA, we have A, T, C, and G. For RNA, we have A, U, C, and G. So whenever... Um, when we're doing the complementary base pair, if we're making RNA, instead of having A paired with T, you would have A paired with U because there is no T for RNA, okay? So here, here's the thing to remember. There is no T for RNA. There is no T for RNA. There is no T for RNA. What is it called? It's called U, okay? It's, it doesn't mean that in RNA we call the T U. Uh, it's just it's kind of an equivalent, but they, but they're they're two different structures, as you can see. If you if you look in detail, they're not exactly the same. Okay, but C still pairs with pairs with G. It's just A pairs with U now. But if you were to have a U, it will still pair with A. All right, double stranded. Uh, last difference, but DNA is double stranded always. RNA usually is single stranded. If you want to learn about double stranded RNA, you can come to AP Bio. Um, but you can remember RNA as single-stranded. That's, that's the norm, okay? Uh, DNA is normally um, double-stranded. There are some exceptions as well um, for viruses, but you don't need to know about that yet. And uracil is the U thing we're talking about. Sugar is called deoxyribose. Sugar in the backbone of RNA is called ribose. Uh, and then that's it. Now your job is to rem take all this in. And remember, I'm going to make a... A quizlet later today that you can use to study for tomorrow's quiz. Um, if you're watching this video as homework, we're doing this because um, because your class is behind because of the snow schedule. It's not your fault, but this, this is your homework, right? So you need to make sure that you're understanding everything just like you're listening to me in class. The only difference is I'm much smaller than me in class and you can't ask questions yet, but tomorrow you can ask questions in class. Good luck studying!